Kelly yields back chair does not recognize himself. Quote, Mr. Weiss has full authority to bring cases in other jurisdictions if he feels it's necessary. That was your response, Attorney General, to Senator Grassley's question on March 1st, 2023. You just referenced it when Mr. Bishop was questioning you. Only problem is he'd already been turned down by the U.S. Attorney in the District of Columbia, Mr. Graves. So he didn't have full authority, did he? I had an extended conversation with uh, Senator Grassley at the time. We briefly touched on the Section 515 question and how that process went. Um, I, I've my never been suggested. Simple. My point's real simple, Mr. Garland. You said he had complete authority, but he'd already been turned down. He wanted be. to bring an action in the District of Columbia, and the U.S. Attorney there said, no, you can't. And then you go tell the United States Senate under oath that he has complete authority. I'm going to say again that uh, no one had the authority to turn him down. They could refuse uh, to partner with him. They could you not. You can use whatever you, you, language. They refuse to partner is turning down. Well, it's not the same under a well-known Justice Department practice. Here's why the statute of limitations question is important that Mr. Bishop was getting at just a few minutes ago. Here's why it's important. You let the statute of limitations lapse for 2014, 2015. Those were the years with the felony tax charges where Hunter Biden was getting uh, income from Burisma. Here are four facts that I think are so important. Hunter Biden was put on the board of Burisma, made a lot of money, got paid a lot of money over those years couple million bucks. He wasn't qualified. Fact number two, he wasn't qualified to be on the board of Burisma. Not my words, his words. He said he got on the board because of his last name, the brand, as Devin Archer said when he was under oath and we deposed him. Fact number three, Burisma executives told Hunter Biden, we're under pressure, we need help. Fact number four, Joe Biden goes to Ukraine, leverages our tax money, American people's tax money to get the prosecutor fired who was applying the pressure. Interestingly enough, that fact is entirely consistent with what the confidential human source told the FBI and they recorded in the 1023 form. The same form Mr. Ray didn't want to let this committee and the Congress see. That all happened. That all happened. And what I'm wondering is why you guys let the statute of limitations lapse for those tax years that dealt with Burisma income? There's one more fact that's important, and that is that this investigation was being conducted by Mr. Weiss, an appointee of President Trump. You will, at the appropriate time, have the opportunity to ask Mr. Weiss that question, and he will no doubt address it in the public report that will be transmitted to the Congress. I don't know the answer to Did those questions. Did they forget? Did the lawyers just like let it, that they just like, oh, Darn, we let it, did they, were they careless? I expect that won't be what he says, but uh, because I you promise- You know that's not the case, because as Mr. Bishop pointed out, they had a tolling agreement. They had, they talked to Hunter Biden's defense counsel and say, let's extend the statute of limitations. And then at some point they made an intentional decision to say, we're gonna let the statute of limitations lapse. And I wanna know who decided that and why they did it. Mr. Weiss was a supervisor of the investigation at that time and at all times. He made the necessary appropriate decisions, and you'll be able to ask him that question, and he will. You know why they did it. Everyone knows why they did it. You may not say it, but everyone knows why they did it. They did Baris, those tax years. That's that. That dealt with the pre, that involved the president. It's one thing to have a gun charge in Delaware. That doesn't involve the president of the United States. But Barisma, oh my, that goes right to the White House. We can't have that. And we can slow walk this thing along. We can even extend the statute of limitations and then we can intentionally let it lapse. And we know this investigation was slow. Here's what everyone said. Shapley said, DOJ slow walked the investigation. Ziegler, slow walking and the approvals of everything. This happened at the Delaware's attorney's office and DOJ tax level. Mr. Sobosinski, the FBI agent said, I would have liked to th see things move faster. Ms. Holly said the same. Every witness we've talked to said this thing was slow walked and we know why. They slow walked it long enough to let the statute of limitations run so they wouldn't have to get into Burisma. Tell me where I'm wrong. Will the gentleman think, yield? No, I'm asking the, the, yeah. Mr. Garland the question. I think I've tried to make clear that I don't know the specifics of the investigation. Much of what you are describing occurred uh, during the Trump administration, during a uh, Justice Department appointed by President Trump. No, it didn't. This is four and a half years of this investigation. We're talking about the last few years. Your statement was just this year, March 1st, to, to Senator Grassley. No, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I was trying to respond to your descriptions of what the uh, IRS um, um, uh, agents said about certain the statute things. Statute of limitations is six years. That lapsed 
that lapse here in, in, the, in the Biden on the, administration. On the statute of limitations, I um, will say again that the explanation for why the statute of limitation was lapsed, if it was, has to come from Mr. Weiss. My time is this, but let me ask one, la one last question real quick here. Uh, who decided that David Weiss would stay on as U.S. attorney? Look, uh, this had occurred at, before I came. Mr. Weiss had been uh, kept on. I promised the... Uh, no, I didn't say, you can walk all through that. I said, who decided? The White House decided. Mr. Weiss... Right? They serve at the pleasure of the president, right? Mr. Weiss was... Joe Biden decided to keep David Weiss as U.S. attorney. Uh, you weren't sworn in until March. He was... He was... He was... He was... He was, just, they, he was told he was going to stay on in February. Expired. Pretty fundamental question. Who decided David Weiss was going to stay as U.S. attorney in Delaware? Mr. Mr. Weiss, Chairman, your time has here. expired. Mr. Chairman, your time has expired. I'm waiting for an answer, and then I'll... And I'll yield well, then you asked the question after your time had expired already. Point of order. Gentleman can respond, then I'll go to Ms. Jackson Lee. Mr. Weiss was the um, special uh, uh, U.S. attorney from the District of Delaware when I came on. He had been appointed by President Trump. I promised that he would be permitted to stay on for this investigation, and that is what happened. General Lee from Mr. Texas. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Gentleman from uh, New York's recognized. Mr. Chairman, I believe you misquoted uh, from the transcript of the Senate and of the Senate hearing. I therefore ask unanimous consent to enter into the record the entire transcript of the Senate hearing. With, without objection, but I, I didn't thank you. just quote what Mr. Garland said. Uh, Ms. Jackson Lee from Texas, recognized for five minutes. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. None of the Republicans' goals today include solving Americans' problems of which they are concerned of. There are many reasons, Mr. Attorney General, that prosecutors decline to bring charges. One of those reasons is that they don't have any evidence for a conviction. That is the justice way. That is just in America. So let me raise these questions and concerns with you today. As we all know, Republicans have repeatedly alleged that the DOJ and FBI are conspiring to shield the Biden family from public criticism and giving Hunter Biden special treatment in its investigations. They have demonized law enforcement officials working with this case at every turn which has directly led to increased threats against FBI officials, law enforcement, of which they pretend to support. I want to place into the record two excerpts from recent transcribed interviews, and I would ask that copies be made available to you. The first is from a June um, interview with Jennifer Moore, FBI's former Executive Assistant Director for Human Resources. She told this committee that FBI had received so many threats that it had to stand up an entire 10-person unit just to deal with them. She said it is unprecedented. It is, it's uh, a number we have never had before. More testimony pages 202 to 203. The second excerpt is from an interview earlier this month with Thomas Sobosinski, the special agent in charge of FBI's Baltimore field office. Here's what he said. I joined the FBI 25 years ago. I joined for a reason, not to protect the American people, uphold the Constitution. I've been to war. My family's been in bad places. My kids have been evacuated from war zones or quasi-war zones. I've been in some bad things. I have accepted that. I am solely focused on two things, and they're not mutual excuses. The first is like every investigation, I want to get to a resolution in a fair, apolitical way. The second thing, it's becoming more important and more relevant, is keeping my folks safe. And that part, I've never expected to have to be able to be concerned about keeping families safe so that, for me, this is becoming more and more of a job that I have to do and take away from what I was assigned or signed up to do, which was to investigate and do these things. So when you talk about potential frustrations with communication, I am personally frustrated with anything that places my employees and their families in enhanced danger. Our children, their children, did not sign up for this. Mr. Attorney General, do you agree that politically charged rhetoric claiming that law enforcement agents, and I have many questions if you could uh, be brief, are corrupt and contribute to this onslaught of threats against public servants. Okay, as I um, said in my opening statement, uh, we have had an astounding number of threats against public servants over the last several years. I think that when career public servants uh, in the Justice Department and in uh, election uh, um, workers um, um, uh, and uh, airline crews, when they are singled out, um, 
Uh, this can lead to threats of violence and actual violence. Thank we you. have the actual example of an attack on an FBI office uh, by somebody who was incensed by political rhetoric. This does happen. We must not allow that to happen in this country. Does the rhetoric uh, regarding the Biden case have any basis in reality? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the first part. Does the rhetoric regarding the Biden case have any, any basis in reality? No, it does not. How does this impact FBI and DOJ employees' ability to do their work? I think you mentioned specifically FBI and DOJ employees. As I've already said, the uh, agents of the FBI and the prosecutors uh, understand that uh, criticism uh, comes with their job, um, um, and they uh, will continue to do their jobs uh, without fear or favor. Um, but the idea of uh, threatening uh, their safety or that of their families is just abhorrent. Thank you. And um, I assume that provisions have had to be in place to protect these agents and their families. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the first part. I assume that provisions or protections have had to be in place to protect these agents and their families. Yes, that's correct. Let me move on. Thank you very much, Mr. General. Let me move on to the fentanyl crisis, and I want to introduce H.R. 4272. Uh, but let me just uh, put on the record so that you can probably summarize, and I um, ask for the indulgence of my chair. But in any event, um, that the FBI, the DOJ, are focused, needlepoint focused, if you will, on the crisis of fentanyl. I want to just raise that for you, and then I just want to follow up uh, with one or two other questions, if you would be able to comment on these collectively. Um, I am dealing with the crisis of human trafficking and the prioritizing of America's children. They are under siege. And the level of child sexual abuse materials generating into human trafficking, and I want to put H.R. 30 on the record, indicates uh, from ICAC that there are 99,000 IP cases where they're enticing children and maybe only 1% of them being investigated. I'd like your comment on that. And finally, uh, in the approach of high... Um, um, of Yom Kippur to emphasize the work that is hopefully still being doing with anti-Semitism, attacks on immigrants, and African Americans and Latinos. If you would answer those questions, fentanyl, the human trafficking, and then domestic terrorism. Yeah, these are all horrendous problems uh, propagated by people who are truly evil. Um, we are fighting uh, the fentanyl scourge in every uh, possible way. Uh, starting with the precursors in China, to the uh, labs in Mexico, to the cartels that are bringing the uh, drugs into the United States, to their networks in the United States, uh, to the streets of America. And we will continue to do that uh, with every resource that Congress gives us. Uh, human smuggling um, and sex trafficking are obviously abhorrent. The Justice Department has task forces on both of these subjects and have brought many, many cases on these subjects. Um, the idea of putting um, sexually explicit yep. material about children um, on the web is another area that we are continuing to investigate and to prosecute and to um, ask the social media to take down uh, from their sites. Gentlelady's time has expired. The gentleman's floor is recognized for five minutes.